My name is Terry Whiteside. I'm the chairman of the Alliance for Rail Competition in the United States. I uh, spoke today at APAS and I want to tell you a little bit about what we were talking about, kind of the general feel. Um, I was raised in Calgary, so I have a Canadian feel as well as an American feel for what we've been doing. I represent farm producers in the United States. Most of the wheat commission is from um, Texas all the way to Washington. What we wanted to talk about today was the, both the comparisons and the differences between the Canadian and the American systems. The American system has gone from 40 class ones down to about uh, seven, um, four of them controlling 95% of the business. And so we have very large areas that are duopolies, very similar to Canada. We have, uh, in the west, we have Burlington Northern and, and uh, UP, and in, in the east, we have CSX and Norfolk Southern. They operate very similarly in um, areas where they have total competition or a lack of competition where they are actually market dominant. The differences in the American system, the Canadian system, has been that they they haven't had as much pervasive regulation south of the border as north of the border. Um, but but interestingly enough. Um, some of this, the systems that we're starting to study are the Canadian systems, like final offer arbitration or running rights and, and things like that, uh, inner switching, because we need to bring competition back to the rail systems. Now, the regulators in Washington um, are becoming more and more active in looking at grain issues also. Grain is unique, unique among the industries. One reason, grain producer bears the cost, but doesn't physically pay the railroad. There's a disconnect here. And because of that, the, the, the uh, people that have problems at the regulatory level uh, of getting regulatory justice, if you will, or some kind of, uh, of uh, solving of their problems are the farm producers. Because the very first thing the railroads will do is say, well, they don't pay the freight rate. Therefore, they don't have any standing. So what the STB is doing is they're starting to examine their whole regulatory system around grain. And uh, that's been very helpful as we go forward. Also, the um, Congress has just passed a bill, I went through this today, called S-808. Senator John Thune from South Dakota, uh, chairman of the Commerce Committee, uh, got that shepherded through the Senate. It passed unanimously. Now, I, everybody went ooh and ah when I said that because given that Congress is not doing very much in the United States, it actually passed this bill. We've got a path we're working on to try to get through the House. What it will do is strengthen the STB in being able to open its own investigations. Again, a subject that's come up up here. Um, so we're, we're, we're seeing, we're paying some of the highest freight rates in, in all, of all time. Uh, in the United States. The uh, Class 1 railroads are the fifth most profitable industry uh, in the United States. But they're doing really well. I don't want anybody to worry about them. Um, but we are going to see probably um, some more regulation on for helping the grain industry. Uh, there are people that don't want any regulation at all, the railroad. Every time that uh, we have a hearing, the railroads come in with the same thing and said, you know, we don't need any regulation uh, to limit our monopoly power, but we need regulation to make sure we make adequate revenues. And uh, I hope that sounds familiar because that's the same argument you get up here. Um, but it, it was kind of a fun conference to come to because we had a lot of diversity at this conference of different people that had different thoughts. And I think that's important whenever we're talking here, we have to come to solutions. One of the main themes that came across was this supply chain. The supply chain goes all the way to the customer in our foreign countries that are buying the grain. And we have, and we have different parts of that chain all the way back. The uniqueness of grain is that to the farm producer, they're only, the, the person they sell to, the merchandiser or, or grain shippers, are the ones that they, that's the only ones they see. But in essence, that whole chain prices the grain at the country. And that's the problem we have. We have to make sure that this chain is working very efficiently and there's no bottlenecks in it. So that was the theme that we worked on today.